Hello my friends and welcome, we have mostly good news for today. The counteroffensive of Ukrainian army continues in the Bakhmut area and let's check out the military map. It was yesterday and it is today. The advancement points are here and over here on the north part. This correlates to the recent statement from the Ukrainian command that they moved more reinforcements to that area to continue the counteroffensive in attempt to get Bakhmut under control or encircle the city. As for the Russian side, they continue to resist and Ukraine still unable to get the very important heights close to Berhivka. It's not yet the main counteroffensive of Ukraine that should be started very, very soon. It's already the end of May, the 26th of May for me right now. So we have just five days to start it during the springtime. It was promised for the springtime, but there were lots of the bots for Ukraine to start the counteroffensive. I sometimes read complaints in the comment section saying Ukraine should start the counteroffensive. My friend, I want to reassure you that Ukraine will win this war and there will be the counter-attack but it should be planned with tiny details for it to be successful and our general command knows better together with our western allies who advise us for sure about the Wagner forces in the Bakhmut city Prigozhin officially announced that they start the withdrawal from the Bakhmut city they will replace their position with the Russian regular army forces, with the rebels from the self-proclaimed republics and also some of the volunteers from Ahmad battalion went into that place, but there were just several people. As for the Wagner forces, they would finally withdraw from the Bakhmut on 1st of June and they will take the break in the Ukrainian war. Prigozhin filmed the trolling video today for the Russian regular army. He says that they will still leave a couple of the most experienced Wagner soldiers that were capable to turn the situation in favor of Wagner in the Bakhmut city. So you may check his words out. Come, come here, guys. <laughs> he says, this is Bieber, this is Dolik. And in case the regular Russian army wouldn't be able to handle the Ukrainian counteroffensive, those guys for sure would stop Ukrainian army. So here we see the message from Prigozhin towards the Russian military command. Prigozhin is totally out of control by the Russian military. He trolls the Russian army, he humiliates the Russian regular army. He says that they always run and I'm sure that Prigozhin knows that they will run again in the Bakhmut city. So it's also trolling for the future. The Russian war criminal Strelkov Girkin already said uh, lots of the bad words towards Prigozhin because of his humiliation of the Russian regular army. Well, Wagner achieved what they wanted. They understand that staying in Bakhmut is very risky for them. That is why they finally decided to withdraw their forces. However, I still have some doubts that they would finally withdraw all of their forces because the Russian regular forces do not have enough resources to secure that area. So if Wagner leaves the Bakhmut city, obviously this city would be retaken by Ukrainian forces. And this is the new step of escalation between the Russian elite clans. My friends, we have some shocking news from one of our military journalists in Ukraine the news about Zaluzhny, the general commander. After all of that information coming about the death of Zaluzhny, about his injury, about everything, including the Russian intelligence, they also stated, but we're not sure. So finally, Ukraine have to speak truth because it was the huge pressing from the media, mostly Russian resources. So this is the shocking news for you. I just want to to show you this this video and here you just see it. So this is the new video because the journalist in the screen he says this video is recorded on 25th of May. 
and here we can clearly see the general commander of Ukrainian army. So all of that nonsense that Russian media spread around Russian telegram channels, including also the Russian intelligence. Narushkin himself says that they monitor situation with the house of Zaluzhny. They say that he was injured because of the Russian rocket attack in Kherson and also some say that he went to Cyprus for a vacation. Yes, the Cyprus where you may find lots of the Russians. So it was nothing more but just a simple fake that was spread around by the Russian propaganda. It seems like our general commander wanted to play this game for quite a long time, almost one month, but finally uncovered. And Russia is everywhere like that. So now that I'm recording this video, it's been confirmed that one of the maybe Storm Shadow rockets hit the Berdansk port. It's the occupied city of Ukraine. And what do Russians write? Berdansk, the air defense system Panzer, intercepted all of the three rockets. This is how the intercepted rocket looks like. And here is one more view on the port of Berdan, so definitely rocket found its target. I would say that the counterattack has already been started and actually it's the second phase of it. The first one, as we know, is to gather the information about the enemy positions, about their resources and ammunition depots. The second step or the second phase is to eliminate the supply lines for the enemy and their ammunition. That is what the Ukrainian army does just right now with the Storm Shadow rockets, with the Hymers rocket artillery systems and many more. Obviously, for those kind of the missions, it's better to use aviation. But today it was the Rammstein meeting and the question about the F-16s has been solved. As it was reported, the training of Ukrainian pilots will start in the different countries, including United Kingdom. I know that United Kingdom doesn't have F-16s, but there will be instructors in UK, the flight simulators and the airplanes. As it was reported from the British source, around 20 of Ukrainian pilots will go to UK for the training. Also, many will go to United States, Denmark and Netherlands. The coalition for the fighter jets is quite big, but the main countries are United States of America, United Kingdom, Denmark and Netherlands. Finland and Portugal may also join coalitions and also other unknown countries for now. But for the training in Europe, Denmark and Netherlands will lead the program. By the way, Mark Miller today was replaced, we're gonna speak about it later in this video. So the main thing that indeed it happened, Ukraine will receive the F-16 fighter jets. It's a very versatile airplane. I expected it to be a little earlier, however, in March, but now it's the May time, almost summer time, and still we have around five months until we get those airplanes. It is probably the greatest decision from our allies to supply the fighter jets to Ukraine. And how Russia would react? They will not react. They say today they, they don't think that F-16s would play a big role in this war. So we need more. And the next step will be the long-range missiles. We already start to receive them. The Storm Shadow rocket or cruise missile is the long-range missile, but based in the air on the airplanes. We also need the ground-based long-range missiles as attackums. Sweden may also join the coalition supplying their grippings to Ukraine. Those are a little cheaper compared to F-16s and some say that it's very easy to fly. But Sweden officials are not yet ready to transfer those jets to Ukraine. But the Swedish defense minister Paul Johnson said that they will allow Ukrainian pilots to undergo the basic training on those Gripens. I think that the basic training means the flight simulator training. Well, it's the good start. Probably you know the program Mythbusters on Discovery Channel where they expose and uncover and bust the legends. Here I will break the legend. So yesterday Russian propaganda published the video I posted by the way on my Telegram channel. So please 
check out the link in the video description for you to join my telegram my friends i post the news there regularly throughout the day today i created around 10 posts so what are you waiting just connect to my telegram channel to stay in touch there are no any advertisements nothing and we can speak in the chat over there and you may speak with other people it's very communicative compared to this platform well anyways russia said that it was the drone attack on this ship the ship name it's a very strange name ivan hurs and russia claimed that they fired down all of the drone boats but here we have this video published from the camera of the drone let's watch it so probably this is the boat and as you can see they are shooting they are shooting on uh, just to the boat over here there's some traces especially over here you may see how bullets are coming to the water but still the drone went very close to the ship very very close and signal lost and clearly it was Ivan Hur's ship one of the newest Russian ships actually and we don't know the destiny of it some of the resources say that it was severely damaged indeed it was however it was damaged to the aft part we call it karma and even in case of the damage below the waterline they may just isolate that part of the ship it would be much critical for the ship to get the damage over here where the engine is and also it's in the middle of the ship obviously it's the military ship so you may also isolate the damage part so for the successful mission you need lots of the drone boats and as we saw from the russian propaganda media indeed they fired two other drones and one of the drones at least was destroyed by the russian fire hopefully in the future we'll see the information about the destiny of the ship for now it's unknown and someone made the photo in sevastopol about some sort of the ship that looks very similar to ivan hurs it was dated from today and russians start to say that the ship is okay everything is fine but actually it's not because it's the other ship the name of the ship is project 12700 alexandrite which looks the same to ivan hurs but they have different specifications and specializations ivan hurs is the surveillance ship plus as you can see on alexandrite ship that was spotted today in sevastopol they have the special system on the back to put the mines or to get the mines on board and on the photo you can clearly see that part i hopefully yes probably you can see that on the aft part there is this system so it's not the ivan hus some say that russia built the huge defense lines on the south indeed those are huge but stupid let's see what may happen to the legendary pyramids with the help of the challenger 2 tank so here we go it has the special plug on the front and it is used to just to go front so <laughs> you may see what is happening to those pyramids obviously in russian case they're connected between each other but i think that the tank is capable to move them forward as you can see the tank may dig down into the ground lowering the silhouette of the construction and then it may proceed with this plaque it may also create the road just across the trenches yes there will be some bump but still light armor vehicles would be able to move across the trenches and encircle russians behind those defense lines this tank is very powerful the main problem i would say would be the mines out there but for that we also have the special equipment all right russia again started to bomb their own cities or villages like in this case one more aviation bomb fab 500 was found in kalinino village by locals a couple of months ago russia dropped two of the aviation bombs just in the central part of belgorod city and here it's not very far away and this is the rostov on don military airfield there was the boom in the skies and probably it was some sort of the drone that was flying in that area it was the big exchange of the prisoners of war so wagner's were exchanged for ukrainians and vice versa around 100 people from each side so as you can see probably those are russians and those are ukrainians not sure so they were 
exchange that's good Prigozhin here again he always on the camera he's like a very very popular russian bloggers so he met with the ukrainian soldiers who were imprisoned during the fight for the bahmut city before around three weeks ago Prigozhin said that they will not take the prisoners but now he is speaking with the prisoners so everything is good for it i'm happy that our guys are alive he asked them not to go and fight again because the second time they will not release them and after exchange he met with the Wagner soldiers or Russian soldiers that were released from the Ukrainian prisons Prigozhin asked them if they were tortured in Ukrainian prisons or humiliated but all of the soldiers said no the behavior from the Ukrainian side was respectful and this is totally destroys the Russian official propaganda okay Charles Brown will take the position of Mark Milley so he will be the new general commander of the United States Charles Brown was the commander of the United United States Air Force and he is the former United States military pilot I'm out of clue whether it's good change or not but speaking about the F-16s or other fighter jets that Ukraine will get soon I think that Charles Brown knows this business Spain will send four more Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine awesome it's been reported that two of the russian attack airplanes suhoi su-25s were shot down today using the man pads actually one of the airplanes was shot down in skies the other one collapsed upon landing because it had the damages in the air there is no video for the first airplane but the other one landed in mariupol and here is the outcome of its landing Ukraine gets more and more damage of the Hammers rocket artillery systems and other artillery systems like M777. They actually play a great role from the long distance, it's hard to identify whether it's fake or real. And Russia fires their expensive rockets and artillery that they really need to target those dummies. The Russian Federation and Belarus, or should I call it Belarus, signed the agreement to place the nuclear warheads on the Belarus territory. The self-proclaimed president Lukashenko today stated that initially there will be just the tactical nukes, but later on also the strategic nukes. Belarus will take control over the tactical nuclear weaponry on their territory, but Russia will take control over the strategic nuclear weaponry in belarus interesting because it violates all the regulations and agreements well the international organizations are quite silent for now my friends now press the like to this video and if you want to support my job there are some links available in the video description just below you may also support me on patreon or just on the sponsorship on this youtube channel my friends thank you so much for your awesome support and your awesome help I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.